morning. Queenie was a doll whose age stood still. She used to dance in vaudeville. Dark eyes, lips like glowing coals. The kind for whom men sell their souls. Late Saturday morning, broiling hot. Queenie woke up feeling shot. Maybe she woke from a dream with a cast of the four flushing hustlers who loved her last. Used her. Abused her in her checkered past. So, now you know. A fascinating woman as they go. Charlie was up, ugly and threatening. Hardly the lovable comedy king. Years ago, he'd have showered and shaved first thing. But now, since they said he'd lost his touch, how he looked in private didn't matter much. He was depressed, obsessed with the thought of the comeback he needed to make, and the thought of failure. And what was at stake if he lost, which was a lot more than the money it cost. A Hollywood trade paper spread before him listed the grosses of Chaplin's picks and Harold Lloyd's and Keaton's clicks. The whole paper seemed to ignore him. Jolly love. Queenie's so tired. Pour me a cup, will you? Get it yourself. Jolly. Queenie's so tired. What the hell do you think you are, the queen of sheep or something? I got to go to Hades, I would 
rather go with Queenie. She might seem kind to me, but it's only a bluff. Cause down inside, the sweetness shines. She's a zircon in the rough. I'm caught in the web, and I gotta stay beside her. I don't know if I'm the fly or the spider. Oh well, things are swell. Long as Queenie is mine, she's a mixture of evil. An innocent charm. She's a kind of Lucretia Borgia of Sunnybrook Farm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that's Lay off me, you big palooka. Christ's sake, Jolly. Find a knife, I'll damn well use it. Push that idea around. My sweetie spats, but I love her. Oh, the hell with you. Come on, let me pour you a cup of java, huh? Table all right for you, madame? Thank you. That's coffee. Here you are, madame? That'll be fine. Oh, waiter. Oh, yes, madame. Which ones are coming? The ones with the little red hearts next to their names. Little red hearts? The ones with the X's have previous engagements. Goldstall's not coming. Did you talk to him personally? Well, he's personal secretary. Queenie! Queenie, you know that Goldstone is a big mucky muck at Metro. For Christ's sakes, that's the whole point of this party. If I can't get a studio to pick up this picture, we'll be in hock till doomsday. Now call him back. Well, don't get yourself in a lather. Murchison's coming, and... What's his name? That Dutchman from Mammoth Pictures. Kreutzen. He's German. Okay, German. Your bell, Fräulein Quine. You look ravishing this evening. It's my pleasure to see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did the 
projectionist call? Yeah, he'll be ready to run the film at nine sharp. Well, stop worrying. Shh. Queenie, what do you think? <sighs> Grim Chauffeur Tex was an ex Bronco Buster, gun toting extra in a dozen dusters, now retired, and hired as a man on whom Jolly could depend butler and bodyguard, and, rarely in Hollywood, an all-weather friend. Yeah. Good morning. Here's a list of liquor for the party tonight. Twenty keys of a gin? Jolly wants you to leave right away for Pasadena. He says, remember, Ginsburg sent you. Ginsburg? Ginsburg the bootlegger. Knock, knock. Ginsburg sent me. <laughs> and please watch out for hijackers. Yeah, well, I can still use a shooting iron. How is the old boy? Oh, nervous as a cat. He's always been like that since the beginning. I remember his first premiere. He got as jumpy as a porcupine on his wedding night. I need a new vacuum. Where's Queenie? Using the other phone. Queenie! Shut that damn thing off. Goldstone can't come. I talked to him myself. Why the hell not? Well, there's another party tonight. A real big bash up at Pick Fair. Pick Fair? Aunt Mary Pickford. I always knew she had a mean streak. Well, didn't we get an invite from Mary and Doug? Yeah, I threw it away. Well, we couldn't go anyway. And not tonight. Those bums. Ah, forget it. Murchison's coming. He said he'd drop by before he went up to pick fair. You're right. What do we need Goldstone for anyway? This is Murchison's kind of picture. It's got pathos and drama and adventure and class. And... Well, couldn't get that word. Hello? Hello, Queenie. Oh, Katie. What's up? You coming? Hey, Peachy. What? Oh, yeah? She's bringing Dale's sword. Oh? Dale's sword. He just started his first picture. What's it called, Katie? The Sins of Don Juan? <laughs> I hear he's terrific. <laughs> Where did you meet him? At the club? Did he hear you sing? Of course. <laughs> and he loves you anyway, hmm? <laughs> Never mind about the later. Just get here for the screening, hmm? Please. <gasps> okay, Angel, see you tonight. Okay, bye. Bye. <sighs> well, they're coming. Hey, what's that mark on your face? That's a bruise, Queenie. Well, it kind of brings a bloom to my cheek, don't you think? I can't stand it when he belts you around like that. Queenie, why do you take it? I mean, what do you get out of it? Is a big house and fancy clothes enough to justify... Ah, oh, Jimmy, what do you see? Hmm? A body. Female body. Couple of boobies, legs, fine fanny. That's all I was before I met Jolly Grimm. You know, when I danced in vaudeville, I wasn't too nifty in the talent department. But I got by, mostly on this good equipment. But when Jolly found me, gosh... That was different. No, oh, he was a big star and all that. Stepping out with Charlie. All the waiters bowing and scraping. Everybody staring at us. Me waving to all my friends. I loved it. I wouldn't say I didn't. But then, it got to be something more. 
What it was, Jimmy, is he was the first guy who ever asked me what I thought. I remember when I was dancing in Vaudeville, two a day. They had a sign backstage that said, do not talk to the principals. I couldn't even speak to a star, you know? So here was this kind of genius asking me what I thought. And not just about clothes or, or other people, but really serious things. The Geneva Convention. Don't you know? Actually, some things I hadn't heard of. But I looked him up in the papers. He really was interested in what I... I had to say. Which is more than you are, Mr. Morrison. When I talked, he listened. See? I understand that. Really, I do. But the way he beats up on you, Queenie... But he didn't used to be like that. Oh, he was always kind of funny about, you know, sex stuff. But that didn't matter. Especially at first. He didn't get so violent then. It was only later, when the studios didn't want to back his pictures anymore, and he started boozing real heavy. Then it got bad. It's been bad as long as I've known you. Queenie, don't you think it's time to... We'll make a change. Jim, where the hell have you been? We're late. Come on, let's go. Tex could take me by the beauty parlor after he drops you, okay? Beauty parlor? With that face? She must have a thing for the sissy hairdresser. Come on, Queenie, move it. That's the end of real one. What do you think? I think it's... Eddie, you put on real two, will you? Uh, just let it roll out. Step on the pedal. No, no, the other one. That's it. Let it go. You need a driver's license or hunting stick. Experience, laddie. Just experience. Well, how'd you like it? I think it's damn good. The way you juxtapose Jasper's meeting with the little girl with the bell ringing scene, it, it works wonderfully. What'd you think of the opening credits? Well, golly, I... I mean, I gave you screenwriting credit right up there with me, huh? But you didn't have to. Oh, I know, I know. But I figured produced by, directed by, and starring little old me was enough. But we agreed that I wasn't going to do this for credit. I mean, writing a few title cards isn't writing, is it? I know, but I like to help out young people. You know, Jim, this kind of credit can be very important to you. Hey, you want this credit, don't you? I mean... Well, sure. It's just that... No. The second reel has the cannibal scene. This is my favorite. I put in a new title card. Where you see it, it's great. Are you ready? It's all yours. I wanted to talk to you yeah. about the cannibal Please, take scene. Take a look. Take a look. Funny man, trying so hard to be funny. Happy go lucky and sunny. Why do you play the clown? Why do you do it? Funny man. Why do you make us laugh at you? Maybe the reason is that you Think if we knew the real you, we'd frown Why do you hide behind a mask of fun and folly? Life isn't just an endless season to be jolly Funny man, why you live in our laughter? What is it really you're after? Playing your comedy? Maybe you're saying, look at me, folks. I'm just as nice as I can be, folks. Maybe you're saying, please love me. Why do you hide behind a mask of fun and folly? Life isn't just an endless season to be jolly. Funny man, why you live in our laughter? What is it really you're after? Playing your comedy? Maybe 
you're saying, look at me, folks. I'm just as nice as I can be, folks. Maybe you're saying, please love me. 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 What'd you stop for? It's the end of the cannibal stuff. Surefire, isn't it? How about that new title card? You can't boil me, I'm a fryer. Great, huh? It's funny. Sure. Oh, Charlie, forget about Morrison. Tonight's gonna be tremendous. I don't know, Tex. Screaming at Morrison, raising hell with Queenie. Maybe I'm losing my marbles. That's just nerves. Could lay off the booze a bit, though. What do you think? You're right. I don't know, I think Queenie's real mad at me, Tex. She acts okay, but... She is okay. I'm scared of losing her. She doesn't need me anymore, not like she did in the old days. She's beautiful, she, she could have anybody she wants. I think that's what scares me the most. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. You know, what it would be like if she left me. You know something? I'd die without her. Ain't that a laugh? I'm gonna ask her to marry me, Tex. As soon as I get Brother Jasper off the ground and get a few things straightened out. Can you imagine me thinking about getting married? Always scared the hell out of me before, but I wanna I wanna do something for her. I wanna I wanna give her a feeling of security. I don't know. I mean that's what most girls want, isn't it? She asked for that. No. She's got a lot of pride, you know, Queenie. You think she'll have me, Tex? I told you, she's nuts about you. But first, you gotta get this picture into the theaters. Then you can take care of the rest of the things later. Say, why don't we try and find a fruit stand before we go home? Pick up some oranges. Queenie's just crazy about oranges. Good idea. Oh, Signor Charlie, ma... Ma che piacere! Aspetta. Rosa! Rosa, come here. I, I got a big movie star. Vieni subito! Mr. Charlie, I... Uh, I see all your moving the pitch. <laughs> Boy, you... You sure make it a funny moving the pitch. Grazie. Grazie tanto. Rosa. Rosa. You know who this is? <laughs> this is Charlie. The funny man from the movies. Mr. Charlie, how come you... You know, make it no more moving the pitch? Must be five years? I just finished one. Tonight's the world premiere. Oh, it must be great. It would take you five years to make. God's help. Don't worry. It's just going to be great. Listen, Mr. Jolly, you make me laugh more than any of those guys. Even all of the, the Keystone police are put together. Rosa, Rosa, give Mr. Jolly a nicer kiss. Uh, that's all right. Oh, no, 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 no. Rosa, she bring you a mark. She's, uh, she's like a saint. Okay, fine. Come in. Huh. Oh, I got a little present for you. It's for free, eh? Huh. This is the best. This was picked this morning. I want you to give it to your to your missus, Bella Signora. Lego. Grazie. The Rosa. She's very beautiful. For your daughter. Saint Cecilia, help me. Maybe if you're sucking. Jolly, Kreutzer can't come. Jesus Christ, tell him to hold on. I'm going to talk to him. Hey, shall I move the button? Get the hell with the button. I'll suck in. Uh, hold the phone just a minute. Jolly's coming. 
What's the matter, Kreutzer? Can't make it tonight, Charlie. Got to go to Pig what? Fair. Forget about Pig Fair. I can't disappoint Doctor. Listen, you've got to see Brother Jasper. It's going to make you a rich man. But this is business, too. It's in my eyes. But Kreutzer. <laughs> Look, I've got two hot numbers coming to you tonight. Yeah, they both have red hair. Kreutzer, so they'll play Mozart on your stomach if you want them to. All right, hurry up. So long. What redhead? Do I know? He's so horny, he'd wang it to Wilmer if he had the chance. At least he's coming. Ain't you no case? Get out of here, Romeo. I've got to put on my diamonds. All right, gorgeous. The folks are beginning to come in. Who <laughs> Fino to bring us luck? Yes, all right, a toast. I'd like to propose a toast to a jolly good fellow. Oh, no, I'm not drinking, but I'll cling to that. Yakadoo, wackadoo, yakawak, sappy, ain't you feeling fine? Yakadoo, wackadoo, ain't you feeling happy? Cause it's party time. Break away, take away all your inhibitions, get them on the run. Bring yourself, be yourself, yes, sir, we got fun. We're going to a wild party. Everybody come along Yeah, this party has Razzmatazz Jollity, frivolity And all of that jazz We're going to a wild party Christ, what a crew Take a look at Madeline True. People flocked to the film she made, loving the cutie pie part she played. She was every man's sweetheart, every woman's guide, Venus and Adonis, which she never tried to hide. Men dreamed of a real life wife like this adorable thespian, or fools they. The typical pair of minor movie producers stood engrossed, bewailing high production cost. Each of them had suffered most. In 20 minutes, each had lost the sum of $60 million, with gestures, after which they sighed and drank, panting, tragic-eyed, mopping at sadly wilted collars. Then Jackie. Perfect of form and face. In his vein. We're going to a wild party where we can be wild and free. You got a come for it. Cause life is too short. So break out in song and sing all night long and laugh at your face and make life a great big one. As I watched their welcoming exhibition, did I feel something, a premonition? Poor beast with fair beauty by his side, fragile hope threatened by fatal pride? Or was the tremor I felt inside just awe for the radiant apparition of Queenie? Exquisite, wending her way, descending, greeting her courtiers along the stair. She was something you could kneel before in prayer. On my girl, I see. Jolly, a good host has to share. Ah, uh, so when are you showing the picture? As soon as your competition gets here, you want someone to fight with, don't you? <laughs> Richardson's here. Oh, yes. Excuse us, Jeff. We'll see you later. Excuse us. Listen. Hello, Vic. Hey, Jay, how are you? Good to see you, Jolly. Well, long time no see. How are you, Mrs. Burgess? I believe you both know the very beautiful Queenie. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Grimm? I'm so mad for this house. It's so Hispanic, I guess. I always used to wonder who lived in this house. You know, every year I run a little house tour, a sort of ramble through the homes of great stars, and I wonder, would you let us put you on our list? Oh, Mrs. Merchant said I would be delighted. Mi casa es... <laughs> oh, oh, splendido. <laughs> well, A.J., how about a bit of the bubble, or maybe a shot of rotka? How long does your picture run? 82 minutes. Maybe less. So, 
Thank you. Well, we better get started then. We're due someplace in uh, in an hour. Can't stretch it out too long. Tex, let's get everybody into the projection room. Let's get started. But the point came here. Uh, Help with him so he comes late. What about Dale Sword? What about him? And Kate, they're not here yet. Couldn't we wait just a little bit? Dale Sword going to buy Brother Jasper. All right, everybody, movie time. Dirty bunchy sport of God, she'd be here. And you say you call it Brother Jasper? Yes, it's based on the life of Father Huda Parisera. Father who? The great Franciscan missionary. They called him the Apostle of California, but he was hilarious. Well, I mean, he wasn't hilarious. But my conception is. Ta-da! Meet my latest pash, Mr. Dale Sword, the sharpest blade in the Hollywood Hills. Dale, here comes Queenie. And this is Mr. Chex. Oh, boy. I need to see Oh, hello, Queenie. I'm tight. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Christie. Oh, Queenie, this is Dale Sword. Ain't he gorgeous? How do you do? How do you do? She saw his features sharp and clean. He looked sporting. He looked keen. He made her think of squash rackets, polo and yachting and dinner jackets. He had that air of poise without pose that only a well-bred person shows. Queenie, everybody's waiting. Come on. Johnny, it's Dale Sword. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Come on, everybody. It's screening time. Oh, what are you drinking? Here we go. Oh, oh, I'm Bruce Wolf. Dale, good to see you. Good to see you, AJ. How are you? Very good. Especially yeah. after having seen the East Coast process of Don Juan. You set a new house record at the Orphan. Did you know? Really? Dale Sword and Murchison. Prince and Tsar. The King of the Hill. And the Rising Star. Like goes to like. Kind goes to kind. Winners find winners. And losers find just other losers left behind. Beggars and beauties and benefactors, millionaires and zeros, lovers, clowns and heroes, met on set. They rushed to their places in the grand salon. The curtain was rising, the show was on, starring loners and owners of Babylon, phonies and cronies and hangers-on, the whole freeloading pantheon. The wheel was spinning, the course was charted, comedy was beginning, the tragedy had started. My friends. When I first thought about how to introduce Brother Jasper to you.
sir. Is this Mr. Grimm's house? That's right. Well, do you know where I can find Mr. Grimm? You're looking at him. Oh, Mr. Grimm. Oh, I'm so excited to meet you. Gee, you look thinner. I mean, I mean, on the screen you look gigantic. Oh, well, I mean, I didn't mean Who that. are you? Oh, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. My sister said I should come. You know, Grace. Grace Jones. She came with any man, Joni. What's your name? Nadine. Nadine Jones. Welcome, Nadine. How'd you get here? I hitchhiked and thumbed all the way from Burbank. You see, I'm a dancer. Acrobatics, ballet. Like that. I'm good too, Mr. Grimm. I thought maybe you'd let me entertain all these movie people. No, not tonight. It's not a good time. Oh, no, really? Listen, you must be starved. Why don't you go inside and get some chow? Ask for Wilma. She has some sarsaparilla in the icebox. It's right through there. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Grimm. But, but maybe later, we'll I... We'll see. Run along. Go ahead. My apologies, this traffic was brutal. How are things at Mammoth Studios? Still raking in the bucks? Yeah, head over foot, as they say. You still have time to see the last scene in the picture, where Brother Jasper prays for a miracle. So where's the redheads? Later, I'd say. You see, I play the part of Father Junipero Serra, the apostle of California. He uh, he meets this little crippled girl. A little crippled girl? Yeah, see, and, and, and his faith begins to waver. He goes to Africa. He's the Pope's emissary. Now, the last scene takes place in the chapel, but I've never played a scene quite like this one. Well, A.J.? Good job, Jolly. Well, I like it. I'm glad. And the ending, when the little girl walks, so moving. Would you mind one tiny suggestion? No, of course not. Change the little girl to a little boy. Do you remember Jackie Coogan and the kid with that big hat pulled over his eyes? Francine, I'm quite sure Grimm here cast the picture the way he saw things. Well, actually, there's still a lot of editing to be done, A.J. I, I know there's a little more work to do with. A.J., I plan to have another... Hello, another... darling. What Dale, we're heading for Doug and Mary's. Why don't you send your car on ahead and you and the young lady ride with us? Thank you, A.J., but I think I'll stick around for a little while. See you later. That profile. Hasta luego, everybody. The silent pictures of Robert Grimm. We're going with sound now. Robert wants it. What position do you think the studio will take, A.J.? We've really got to dash, Charlie. Call the next week. Uh, Kreutzer wants the picture, but of course Mammoth doesn't have your sound. Sounds good to me. If I were you, I'd take it. You and Mrs. Grimm must call on us sometime. And don't forget, we want you on our house tour. They don't build them like this anymore. I'll call you on Monday, A.J. Uh, I'll be tied up all day Monday. Call me later on. Bastards. Screen with little brains, some of those people can be swackos, but they love me. Don't crap me, Queenie. Oh, Charlie, listen. I think it's a swell picture. I think it's the best thing you you've ever... think? Who gives a flying fart what you think? 
Murchison's the guy with the moolah. Now, wait a minute. Kreutz is still here. She's going to start giving me advice. She's going to start telling me about the picture business. I'm not interested in what you think. You're supposed to look good. That's all. But keep that big fat trap of yours shut. Do you understand?
really wonderful. Glad you like it. And I'm no Herman Castle, but uh, would you like to dance with me? Uh, well, sure, sweetie. Katie, you wouldn't mind if I danced just once with our hosts before we left, would you? <laughs> of course not, darling. Oh, not in there. Too much hubbub. Let's go out to the garden. All right. For God's sake, you're asking for trouble. Don't you know that? Oh, hush. Queenie knows what she's doing. She's got my name in her little book for this dance, old man. You can have the next one. Just want to talk to her. My God, look at the glint in his eye. On God, monsieur. doing Singapore Sally on top of the bar, <laughs> laughing her head off. After that, I don't know. Where's Queenie? I don't know. Host to sing around. I was hoping you. Come on, I hope you look for him. Something too. isn't important. I'd rather go with the right studio. Kreutze, you have the class approach. Monks, Grimm, who wants monks? Today the people want action, violence, lots of shooting, gangsters. You want gangsters? You want gangsters? You got gangsters! Wait, wait a minute, it's coming to me. It's, I, I, see a whole, I see a whole new scene. Wait a minute. Uh, Morrison, Morrison, this is my co writer He's a college graduate, got a lot of swell ideas. He's a little plot crazy, but he's a genius. A genius. What do you say, genius? What do you say we put Brother Jasper uh, in a bank? He goes to a bank to make a deposit. In 1785? What's the difference? So we make a few allowances. What's the difference? See? So he, he goes to this bank, and um, he's got the week's uh, collection, see? And he gets a receipt from the teller. Handwritten on a piece of old parchment. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> So, uh, all of a sudden he sees, uh, these two mean bastards, see? And they're wearing two big black sombreros. And, uh, one of them's holding a gun over the crowd, see? And the other one, the other one has cleaned out the safe. And, uh, the other guy starts, um, starts taking the valuable from... I'm sorry. You must think that I'm a typical Hollywood nasher. Would you like me to leave? No. I think. 
think you're really very nice. Here's a dance you all should know. One you do by moving slow. should go. Come with us. Gee, I'm kind of the hostess, Dan. Well, then I won't go either. Katie, do you mind going a little bit? Oh, Danny, I don't want no, to go I... oh, oh, damn. Oh, 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 oh. You know what I'm talking about. Lay off that guy. Why? Because I'm telling you. You don't know who the hell are you anyway. <laughs> Haven't you had a trifle too much to drink, old sport? You oh. dirty son of a... Slow down. Easy does it. Slow down, boy. But you don't want to mess with his pretty face. Oh, you think you are, pretty boy. Bigger than me? Because you made one lousy picture. 27 pictures, that's what I made. That's a career. Cheap, too big imitation of Valentino. Son of a bitch! Come on, let's get out of here. Follow me, I don't need your help! I don't need it! Oh, he's got you! <laughs>
I was going to be a movie star. <laughs> oh. I had this one photo in a costume with clusters of lemons on the skirt and a hat with a lot of tulle and face-up shoes. Oh, I must have sent that photo to every producer and director in this town. And I sat by the phone and waited. It was just one more girl standing on the road, hitching a ride. <sighs> and then? Then I got sick. Mm. Actually, I was starving. You can't believe that, can you? No. No, I can't believe there wasn't always somebody looking after you. I looked after myself. One day there was a casting call on Jolly's picture, and I was one of the girls they picked that day. <laughs> Except I was so weak I fainted. There was no place to even lay me down, so they put me in this stable on a pile of straw. And there I lay in the dark. When I came to, it was real quiet. Everybody had gone. And suddenly the door flew open and there was Tex. Oh, he just about jumped a mile when he saw me. Oh, yes. I've been crying and oh, lost one of my shoes somewhere or something. He was real nice. Brought me home, cooked me ham and eggs. Jolly was at some big premiere and he came in with a lot of fancy types, all in tuxedo, laughing at rubbing his hands together like he'd just done something really big. Oh, he was on top of the world then. Anyway, Dex told him about me, and he said, well, we'll keep the little lady at home. Can you imagine? We'll fatten her up. <laughs> he was something. So sweet. Yeah, sweet and good to me. He was always there smiling. You gotta be philosophical about these things. Whatever happens, happens. I understand why my best friend would throw herself at Dale. I mean, everybody knows what kind of life she has with Jolly. Ain't no secret. Okay, we gotta find them. Oh, Jimmy. been stuck on her for years it's plain as day but look sometimes you win sometimes you lose like tonight okay we both lost but that doesn't mean that a couple of losers aren't entitled to a little fun okay loser you win suits you. Angel food for an angel face. You sure do remind me of Queenie. First time I met her, she was an extra on the set. She was starving. Filling her face with her breakfast donuts like she hadn't eaten in a week. Who was she had, poor kid? I still remember her. Grabbing those donuts. Next thing I knew, she was sitting right where you were, shoveling in Texas ham and eggs. She used to hitchhike all over the place, just like you. Did you put her in your pictures, Mr. Grimm? No. I took care of her, Nadine. Real good care.
Grace says I should be nice to you. She says maybe you put me in your pictures. You sure do remind me of Queenie. Listen. If you want. You can kiss me or stuff like that.
Sunday morning to you. Why is she doing this to me? I don't understand. That'll happen. She's young and you ain't. I don't understand. There's lots of guys before you. There'll be lots of guys after you. That's just how it goes. No! Oh, look, Dale probably ain't the first. Don't say that. Come on. Be a realist. You guys think you got some kind of patent on fooling around? A woman's got needs too, you know. Don't say that. I don't, I don't, I don't want you to say that. Come on. Dale's probably number 679. Last week the milkman, this week Dale, next week the bootlegger. Shut up! Listen, sweetie. Shut up! Shut up! I was just kidding. I was just trying to make light of it, you know. <laughs> What's that on your face? Shelly, why are you hollering? Brother Jasper, don't holler. That's right. That's right, I'm not a character. Hey, you like my character, huh? My brother Jasper? He's all right for a Gentile. Hey. Katie, me and Sam are going to pick fair. You want to come? No, it's too late. You crazy? It's never too late. They serve breakfast. Hey, where the hell you two guys been? I've been looking all over for you. We, we got to talk a deal. Remember? A deal. Yeah, we'll talk a deal. Let pick fair. Listen, I got this swell new idea for a scene. Where's the sword? Didn't he bring you? Come on, let's get him. We'll all go. Oh, well, Mr. Dale's sword is very busy. Yeah. Where's Dale's sword? Where's Dale's sword? Where's Dale's sword? Dale's sword. Johnny, give me the cash. Give it to me, Johnny. Come on, now. 
Come on, though. No. Oh, my God. Let go, Tice. Gun keeps firing us. It's the kid. It's the kid of the dark Charlie, put that gun down. What are you trying to do? Back. No! No! 